So we, we did things intentionally. Right. We have services intentionally to reach out to the different culture groups that exist in our community, in our city, uh, where we are. So do you think in seeing all of the cultures, mm -hmm. and I know at one time, you know, people that, that were not used to some types of, of <laughs> expression of praise, the <laughs> jumping and stuff, they, they took it back and like, well, what, what is actually going on? What is that? I know that we we're discussing a shift mm -hmm. at Abundant Life. Right. Yeah. And I see the shifting going on. Absolutely. I see the shift, and, and, and I embrace that shift because I know God is doing a new thing. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's what's so um, necessary and important for people got to embrace the shifting, the movements of God. And it's not so much that he's replacing people as much as he's replacing our mindset. Right. We, we got to think different. Right. You know that it, everything starts with the brain, starts with the head, starts in the mind. Right. The Bible says as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Right. As, a man, as a man thinketh in his heart, well, you know, I'm doing a little teaching on that, you know, I think the, the natural sight of man kind of got it mixed up. I think, I think this my, I know, I, well, I'm going to mess with that. It's a whole other teacher. But, but, but I, I'm, I'm understanding that it takes a different mindset to go along with the shifts that God is creating for the people of God, for, for, for us all. I have some older members of my church who I, I thank God for them. Because when God began to raise up the millennials who really, and my church didn't like to be called millennials, they like to be called young adults. But when God started raising them up, um, some of the older older uh, generation were like, okay, where, where, where do we fit? So do we get thrown away? And I intentionally had a service where I made sure that it, God is using the old as well as the new. And you can mix them together. You can merge them together. So like last night, we experienced, um, you know, uh, our praise team, abundant. We, we opened up the service. We opened up with a, a kind of uh, upbeat kind of song. Well, I started with prayer, and we went into this upbeat kind of song. And then when um, uh, we have an A-Life ministry, a campus ministry that we've had for years, they came and brought another kind of feeling. And then when Resting Place, uh, when they came up, uh, they they do things and, you know, like uh, they bounce. Bounce, right. So, so we got with the, the worship with our hands up. We got, we got with the bounce. And then... Um, at the very end of the press service last night, we went into this Pentecostal <laughs> and those that were bouncing right, right. were dancing. Exactly. Because the ones that were dancing were bouncing with the ones that were bouncing. It was absolutely, uh, yes. not all have, um, because it's their lifestyle, it's, it's more, uh, I think they think more performance than they do ministry. Right. And that takes nothing away from their anointing, that takes nothing away from the glory of God that is always present when they go forth. It, it's just for me, I just think we just need to be a little bit more prayerful in, in how we, how, how, how they, because I'm not on that level, right. but how they present themselves uh, in regards to um, performing on the stage in a, in a concert hall as opposed to performing at a church, in a church setting. You have to always keep in mind that you're still um, presenting the gospel, okay. and and it needs to be done in a way that uh, brings people to the light of Jesus Christ. So we have to be careful in our performance, I, and that's not to say that we can't have lights, camera, action. I think we need to have it all, right. I, but I think the spirit that comes from that needs to always be uh, soaked in prayer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and you said it. Well, you say, man. Yeah, that's in our that's in our DNA, right? That's, that's, right. That's in us. Got so good. Um, I wanted to also speak about um, artists that um, feel that um, that there's no place for them. Um, also, they feel that they can do both. They can sing on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And then on Monday to Thursday or Friday, they do the club. Oh, wow. Um, there's a scripture that says, love not the world and you the world. Yeah. How do we, do we apply that? What, what, what is your view on that? Um, would you have a praise worship leader leading the service? You're going to ask me this question? I'm going to ask you because they <laughs> asked me, so I'm going to ask you. 
<laughs> so, yes. Uh, but actually, because there are some gospel artists, yeah, because of money, whatever, mm -hmm. they do both. They sing on Sunday morning, and then Tuesday they do a, an underground type of thing. Okay. I personally, I have had musicians who, because it was their lifestyle, they would they offer their services to the church. And, 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 and some of them have offered their service to the church. Right? Some of them, I remember back in the day, they didn't ask for any money. They just asked for an opportunity to serve God. Right? Uh, and, I, and I said, sure, you can come. And I did find out that they were playing in the, in the jazz club and uh, on the weekends and what have you to, to feed themselves, uh, to keep a roof over their heads. Right. So I, again, I, I'm not that condemning kind of guy. My job right. is to feed the sheep. I don't, I don't, I don't want to make my job judge the sheep. I want, my job is to feed the sheep, preach the gospel, lead people, lead by example. Right. You know, let my light so shine. So, I, so I allow that to happen. Uh, now, if it's if it's <laughs> if we get to a place where they're in a strip club or whatever, then I would like, okay, we need to have a conversation. conversation. Yeah, we need to have a conversation because if once you're a part of the music ministry of my, of my church and uh, singing on the on the praise team or choir, whatever, you become a a flashing light to people, right. and that you're in a place of authority that gives you you're a, a, an influencer. Right. So you're influencing people to do what you do. Right. So I would if that starts to happen, I would have a conversation with them and ask them, would you consider? Uh, maybe adjusting some of the things that you do, and it's 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 your lifestyle. Right. I, and I think if I preach the gospel like it should be preached, if I tell the story like it should be told, and live the life as an example, then I hope that people will see how far they can go. Because I don't know how far you can go, right? but but I think if I just preach that good news, the gospel to you, and be an example to you. You'll have to make those decisions when you need to make those decisions. Um, so that's a real hard question to answer, but uh, I, hope it, I hope that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. I yeah. mean, Bishop, we have various artists that come to our church. Sure. Um, we have Donnie Perkins, we have Arnold Sapp, um, Kim Burrell, we have Holbus. <laughs> Thanks they God. Always Thanks be the God. Say, they always say they love coming to this church. Wow. Because we embrace praise and worship. Yeah. Like none other. Um I want you to speak to that as as we close. I know there's people that are, are, are looking this way and, and want to ask more questions. Mm -hmm. However, what made you so successful? I know I know oh. people, people love you. Wow. Any, anybody yeah. I speak to? Bishop George, can you hear you see right? <laughs> Middle name. <laughs> uh, they love me. Not not only in this nation, but across the world. They they know Bishop George Seawright. And they look because they say he's a nice guy. <laughs> he's a nice guy. I hope so. And um, I know for myself, I've been there 15 years. Wow. And um, ever since 9-11. Yeah. And um, God, it's just the way that you treat your family, the way you treat your wife. It's, it's not a put on. It's something that just just comes out of your, your spirit. Mm. So can you speak to us about that? Wow, I don't know how to speak to that. I don't know. I um, First of all, I'm humbled by that. I'm, and and I think what I... But the reason why I say it is because people are modeling, modeling themselves after our church. I mean, wow. Praise and worship. Uh, they they want to bring that experience to their house of worship. Well, I tell you what, since we began in ministry, my mom and my dad, they had us on the altar all the time, and and we created within ourselves an awareness of the presence of God. Um, and that has been through, I think that has kind of ushered me into where I'm at right now. So if people think I'm nice or whatever, it's just simply because I reverence God and I love people. I, I love I love people. Um, I don't know when that got on me, but I really I love people, and in loving people I respect people. Um, I think that everybody has their their way of fashioning their lives um, for the purpose of living their lives, 
fashion their lives for the purpose of living their lives. And sometimes people just don't don't always have it all together to be that perfect person that we would like everybody to be. And I've always understood that. I always understood people, and uh, and that's I think God gave me a opportunity to minister to people, and and I, I got help. I get help. I, you know, my wife is with me. She helps me along this journey. My children help me along this journey, um, and I'm blessed because my children are doing ministry with me, along with me. I'm blessed because my wife is doing ministry along with me, and I only can merit that to the grace of God, only to God constantly showing me how much he loves me, um, and, and I just return it back to him, and I try my best to just honor him. Um, I'm not perfect. I love God and I want to honor him and and continue just to love people. And I love the presence of God. <laughs> We're in the presence. Well, Bishop, 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 we want to thank you for coming and, and sharing um, about gospel, the gospel industry, gospel artists. And um, we appreciate you for your time because I know that you have a busy schedule. And um, we just want to honor you and um, say thank you. You're more than welcome. Thank you. I'm, I'm honored to be here. Um, you know, it's, it's just a blessing to be called to do, to talk about yourself and talk about God, talk about your church. Right. You know, I got a great church. Yes. Abundant Life Family Worship Church. 259 George Street, <laughs> New Jersey, is a great Large church. Church. And what makes it, I say it all the time, what makes it a great church is the people right. that God has so graciously um, brought to Abundant Life. And it's just it's you know it is a responsibility, but it's it's a good responsibility. Uh, it's a conscious uh, awareness that I have um, of God's people, and not just those who are born again and saved, but those who are on their way into the kingdom of God, right. and those who are struggling trying to figure out what am I going to do with my life. Right. It's just a blessing to be alive and available. Thank you so very much. And we also would like to thank um, Paul Robeson and the Newark Express for allowing us to um, film here, um, which is located in the new renovated Haynes Building in Newark, New Jersey. Wow. Thanks again.